Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Power Supply Overview and Comparison. Which power supply should you buy for your computer? On the desk here, I have five power supplies. I'm going to talk about the differences, the pros and cons of each one, and which one is appropriate for any given situation. Linked in the video description below will be the individual unboxings and reviews of these power supplies. There will be close-up shots, details of all the power connectors and everything you might need to know about each of these units. So if you want more details on any specific unit, check out the links in the video description below to my previous reviews on them. Furthermore, in the video description below will be links to Amazon and Newegg for all of these power supplies. I bought all of these from either Amazon or Newegg myself. I recommend both places. They have great prices. Speaking of prices, prices change. I'm going to mention the prices these normally sell at. You may find them for more or less at any given time. I encourage you to compare between Amazon and Newegg and buy it wherever it makes the most sense for you. Now, before I talk about these specifically, there is one thing about power supplies I want to cover, which is 80 plus power efficiency ratings. In short, all the 80 plus means is that they don't waste a lot of electricity. Basic, cheap, generic power supplies generally are very inefficient. They waste a lot of electricity. If your computer needs 100 watts, they might pull as much as 140 or 150 watts from the wall, wasting your electricity. These will not. The white, the 80 plus white, are 80% power efficient. 80 plus bronze is 85% efficient. And then you have silver, gold, platinum, and titanium above that. Each jump beyond bronze is generally about a 2% efficiency jump, meaning for every 100 watts your computer needs, you're saving about 2 watts of electricity. It sounds like more than it is. 80 uh, plus white or 80 plus bronze is generally all most people need unless you find a deal or just okay to spend a little bit more, but keep in mind that above bronze, each jump is about 2% savings. Nice to have, but pretty minor. Starting on the left side of the desk, we have a $30, 400 watt, 80 plus white certified power supply from EVGA, a great basic unit for use in pre-built systems. I own several of those and I have replaced the original equipment manufacturer power supply in Acer Aspire Tower desktops, in Dell Optiplex and Vostro machines, in an HP tower with that unit. It will drive most graphics cards. It'll handle basically anything you put into a basic machine. For $30, it's great value for the money. Now, it's not very feature rich. I will note that it does not have black sleeved cables. So if you care about the look of your machine, if you have a side window, you wouldn't want to use that. However, most OEM pre-built machines don't have side windows, so that doesn't matter. And it comes with a two year warranty. For $5 more, if you care about appearance or want a longer warranty, consider the 430 watt power supply from EVGA. It's not the same unit as the 400, which is 30 more watts. It has a three year warranty, black sleeved cables, so the cables are covered in a black mesh to give a more attractive appearance. It does provide some additional connectors that the 400 doesn't. And so if you would like something that's just a bit nicer with a bit longer warranty for your pre-built machine, that 430 watt unit is very nice. Having said that, if you plan to build your own computer or you have a custom built machine, then I would skip the white power supplies and I would go to one of these two in the middle, the 500B or the 600B, 500 watts and 600 watts respectively, $40 and $50 respectively. There's about a $10 price difference here. Now these are 80 plus bronze certified power supplies with three year warranties. So these are 85% efficient. So they save for every 100 watts consumed, five watts of power over the whites. Not a huge difference, but hey, every little bit helps. These also come with black sleeve cables. In fact, they're very, very similar. And these will drive any single graphics card on the market. A GTX 1060, 1070, or 1080, or any of the cards from AMD, the RX 460, 470, or 4, um, 480 cards, and the upcoming Vega cards from AMD as well. So if you're gonna have a single graphics card of any type from AMD or NVIDIA in your computer, and you'd like a quality power supply with a three-year warranty, one of these two is the one to buy. Now, do you need the 600 watts over 500? Probably not. If you do the math, even if you have a really nice high-end i7 processor that pulls 100 watts, your motherboard, your RAM, your drives are all gonna pull at most 50 watts. So that's 150. Let's say you put a GTX 1070 in. 
1070s are rated about 150 watts, but the overclock, the factory overclock versions can pull upwards of 200 watts. Let's go with the 200 watt number. 150 watts plus 200 is 350. Now there may be a few other things in your system, but you're not going to go over 400. The 500 is actually fine for that. However, the 600 might give you peace of mind, and it gives you the option to install two graphics cards if you want, which the 500 doesn't. Having said that, if you're going to step up to a $50 600 watt power supply and you want the option to inst install two graphics cards, skip it and go to the 750. Now this is a $70 power supply, but it does include some features that these don't. This is the 750 watt 80 plus bronze semi-modular power supply from EVGA. It is $20 more expensive than the 600 watt version, but they're not from the same line. The difference is it's semi-modular. One cable is permanently connected, the motherboard 24 pin ATX connector. Well, you have to use that anyway, so I don't consider that to be a big deal. All the other cables, your serial ATA drive connectors, your Molex connectors, which most people don't need, your VGA connectors, are all separate cables that will plug into the power supply, only use what you need. It makes cable management much nicer and much easier. For the extra $20, you also get a longer warranty and you can drive any two graphics cards on the market. You could put two GTX 1080s in SLI on an i7 overclocked on this 750 watt power supply and you would be just fine. This is kind of the max most people need. To go beyond 750 requires an awfully elaborate computer setup. There are 1000 watt power supplies. I'll show you one at the end of this video. However, they're more flagship products that just look impressive or for people who are doing non-gaming, non-standard desktop tasks. If you by chance have four graphics cards and 20 hard drives in your computer, yeah, you probably need a 1000 watt power supply. 99.9% .9 of anyone watching this video, this is the most you would ever need, and that's only if you need two graphics cards. One graphics card and either of these would be just fine. OEM pre-built machine, either of those is just fine. Or you can spend a little bit more and get one of these if you want. It's not necessary. That's just a personal preference. Now you may notice these are all EVGA power supplies. I bought all of these from either Amazon or Newegg. This video is not sponsored by EVGA. I like their products because of the price to performance ratio, the power ratings, the efficiency ratings, the features of these power supplies for what they cost make them a very good deal. I use these in a lot of computers. Having said that, Corsair, Cooler Master, Thermaltake, Seasonic, all make excellent power supplies. I have no reservations about recommending those brands as alternatives to EVGA. If where you live, you find a deal on one of those brands of power supplies, by all means, they make good units. As I said before, links to all of these will be in the video description below, both my reviews as well as links to Amazon and Newegg. And now it's time for the bonus portion of this video. And here we have three new power supplies to consider. I'm including them in this video to give you some ideas of what your alternative choices might be and to hopefully answer some of the questions you might have. I kept the 600 watt EVGA unit. This is the $50 80 plus bronze from when I had the previous power supplies here. Next to it, I've placed the CX600 from Corsair. This is an 80 plus bronze, just like that is. It is basically the same unit. Same power efficiency ratings, same power load delivery. It has the black sleeve cables. It has a three-year warranty, just like the 600B from EVGA. The difference is it generally tends to cost about $10 more. Now, where you live, if you're not in the United States, maybe it costs less and perhaps it's a deal and then by all means buy it. It's a great power supply. There's no issues with it other than price. My recommendation for the deal is between these, for example, buy whichever one costs the least at the time you go shopping. I will add a link to these in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. By all means, compare the prices. Now moving on from the bronze, we have a gold and a platinum power supply. Now I actually don't think that most people should buy gold or platinum power supplies. The power savings is generally not worth it unless you just live in an area where power costs a lot of money. This is a EVGA 750 watt GQ or gold power supply. It's $90, so it's $20 more than the 750 watt bronze that I showed you before. 
also semi-modular, the ATX power cable is connected, but the rest of the cables are disconnected. It's basically the same unit, it's just for $20 more, you get a gold unit instead of a bronze unit. In terms of dollar saved, three years of normal computer use in normal electricity prices, you won't make up that $20 in electrical consumption. Keep in mind, you aren't using the 750 watts all the time. It's not pulling that from the wall all the time, only as much as your computer needs. When you're just using your computer for normal day web browsing, watching YouTube videos, your computer is probably pulling only about 100 watts from the wall. So, 100 watts, two or 3% more power efficient, you're saving not even a light bulb over the course of a week's use in most cases. Nice, but not really worth the $20 in my opinion. Now, if you live in an area where power prices are expensive or that's important to you or it's on sale, you could consider it. There is one model above this called the G2. It's $100, so it's $10 more. Some people prefer that model for one simple reason, 10-year warranty. The G2 version of this for $100 has a 10-year warranty instead of the five-year warranty this comes with. The other change is it's fully modular. The ATX power cable is disconnectable, so there's nothing attached to it. I, I don't consider that to be a big deal because you have to use it anyway. But if you want a 10-year warranty, spend $10 more and get the G2 version of this. Now, what about this power supply? Now, I've reviewed this before, link in the video description below to that, but $180 for a 1,000 watt, 80 plus platinum power supply. Super efficient, super awesome, will drive anything you could possibly want. You could plug in multiple Titan graphics cards. You could, you could run anything on this. But it's $180, that's crazy. When you can buy a 750 watt gold power supply for $90, what are you really getting for twice the money? Another 250 watts? Two Titan Xs are only gonna pull about 500 watts. The rest of your computer put together will struggle to pull more than 150. This will still drive two Titan X cards and a standard i7 7700K, even overclocked. Now, if you have a Broadwell E machine, if you have a six, eight, or 10 core machine and you're installing two graphics cards, okay, buy this one. I have a 80 plus platinum 1200 watt Corsair in my Broadwell E machine. I also have half a dozen hard drives, half a dozen solid state drives, multiple graphics cards, and it's overclocked. But that's a $4,000 computer. 180 watt power supply for a $4,000 computer is reasonable. For a $1,500, it's not. If you're building a $1,500 machine, this is all you need. If you're building a $1,000 or less computer, these are all you need. At least that's my recommendation. So this has been my overview and comparison of power supplies from a 400 watt $30 unit all the way up to a 1000 watt $180 unit. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below the video. Questions and comments in the comment section below. And as always, check out the video description. Links to everything you've seen here to both Amazon and Newegg will be down there. If you found this video helpful and you wanna go find the best price, those two places are the place to buy at. Links to all of my video reviews, individual reviews of these will also be down there as well. Be sure to check those out if you'd like more details. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.